from the Maple View Animal Hospital Studios, this is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Tuesday, April the 28th. Tuesday mornings, we have a chance to chat with U.S. House Representative Fred Upton. He represents Allegan County in the halls of Congress. He joins us from his uh, St. Joseph area headquarters, and he is on the other side of our Zoom connection. Fred, good morning. Glad you're able to join us once again via the Zoom. That's right. Two weeks in a row. Good morning to you the listeners yeah, it's looking good and we certainly a nasty night tonight yeah let's you know it, it's called april showers to bring may flowers and we're still in april so let's uh bring the rain uh, along those lines and there are the flowers right there uh let's uh first talk about uh, what you and uh uh, democratic uh u.s house representative diana de getty unveiled 21st century cures 2.0 tell us a little bit about uh unveiling that and uh what we're going through right now is sort of uh help shape the round two of 21st century cures well diana de was my partner when we passed 21st century cures uh, three years three and a half years ago now uh, president obama signed it into law it was a three-year effort when i chaired the energy and commerce committee and of course, as we've talked a lot about that bill, uh, it was a bill that really speeds up the approvals of drugs and devices, uh, coupled with $45 billion more in health care, health research uh, to find a cure for cancer, diabetes, uh, really, really advanced uh, the ball down the field. So for, since really last fall, and end of summer, actually, uh, the two of us and our staffs have been sitting together. We've been listening to lots of different interest groups. Uh, from cancer to diabetes, uh, health researchers, the FDA, the National Institutes of Health, and others. What can we do now, three and a half years later, to update what we did at the House, 392 to 26, uh, back in November of 2016? And so yesterday, uh, we unveiled a 12-page concept report. You all were, were part of that uh, press conference uh, carried in Colorado, Michigan, and Nashville's, uh, national reporters on too. And we, we listed about six different areas where we think it can be useful, particularly as we go after to, to kill this pandemic and to emerge uh, with, with a, maybe a, a faster vaccine, use real world evidence uh, to allow that uh, with, with the Food and Drug Administration and others in trials, drug trials and other things that hopefully find the vaccine. But really, let's point out some flaws in the system now. We, we know that there are, particularly with people of color, uh, their incident of COVID-19 is double, triple that of the, of the you know, non-folks uh, 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 with color rates. We ought to be including those in our, in our trials. We ought to have diversity in those clinical trials. That's just one of the, the easy things that we think is part of this. We've reached out to our leadership. Republican and Democrat in the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, Diana Deget is a subcommittee chair, uh, so she's got a, a, you know very well respected Democrat uh, on that side. Of course, I'm the former chair of the, of the full committee, and we think that we are going to be able to perhaps include a number of these elements in the next round, the next the next bill that emerges as we uh, go after uh, and find a cure, hopefully, for COVID-19. So. It was, it, was, it was a good report that we released yesterday. We're looking for additional comments. We've had more than 500 already from different groups that have come in. So, uh, we, you know, it's, it's bipartisan, and, and we hope that it does uh, go, goes a long way to, to, to helping everybody out. Fred, let me ask you a frank question. How concerned should we be about the efforts to try to find, if not a vaccine, a cure, something to deal with uh, uh, the herd immunity aspect of this? Uh, because the concerns are, let's hope it's found in sources that will give it to the world in general and not try to hold the world hostage because, well, we got it and you, you know, we'll, we'll take advantage of the situation. Well, there's some good news. You know, the 
first of all, first of all, not good news. Uh, we'll probably hit sixty thousand American deaths uh, before the, the end of the, ne the next day or two. Uh, so it's it's way above the model that we were maybe hoping for uh, two weeks ago. But you know, as we look at where we are today, uh, you look at the advances that we did with twenty first century cures and, and some very positive things there. Uh, yesterday, I included in my uh, kitchen table report, and I'm in my kitchen now. Uh, but folks can go on my website, upton.house.gov, pretty easy to remember. My day report, and you'll see the report that I talked about last night. Johnson & Johnson uh, has teamed up with another pharmaceutical company. They think that they're going to be in what we call phase one uh, before the end of, of summer. Uh, on a vaccine. Uh, they, they are encouraged about the work that they've done before. Uh, that phase one trial really measures safety uh, to make sure that you're not going to get something worse. Uh, it, it's all, you know, uh, you, you've got the, the folks that are in the trial, in this, this case animals, but they would know before the end of the year, and if it again is successful, they could apply to the Food and Drug Administration uh, to really advance that and and perhaps if it's successful have a vaccine ready uh, and they're beginning to to produce elements of that now uh, literally a year from now so literally years earlier than we would otherwise be obviously it's got to be safe you know we're, we're hoping knocking on wood i don't have any wood right there close to me but uh, hopefully it, it, it's gonna it, it can perhaps be a breakthrough and it's something that we're going to be following for the next number of months for sure. So we're making, we're making progress, uh, but it's not as easy as turning on the light. We're talking with Congressman Fred Upton on the WHTC Morning News. Three full stimulus package has cleared the, uh, sen uh, the Senate, the House, and has signed into law. Now a 3.5 has been signed into law, and there's been talk about possibly a fourth stimulus package. But there are those who are echoing some concerns that in trying to address the present, we're mortgaging the future, and it's going to uh, uh, be a cost that uh, children and grandchildren, that's a line we always hear, it's going to be our children and grandchildren paying the cost of this. How concerned... Uh, our Congress members now about making sure, yes, we're getting the aid necessary, but uh, not uh, mortgaging the future because of it. Well, that's obviously a concern. I mean, who would have guessed that literally in the last month, I mean, if you roll back the clock and ask us those questions back in January without this thing looming over our head, that we would literally be spending three and a half trillion dollars uh, before the the end of spring, uh, no one would have had that conclusion. But here we are. Uh, and, you know, as we look at particularly the PPP program, that's the Paycheck Protection Plan, uh, it was such a success in that first CARES Act that the president signed at the end of March, very beginning of April, $350 billion, it was gone in an instant, literally 10 days. And uh, this, of course, is the program to protect workers so that are, they can still be paid so that when we get out of this trouble nightmare, the small businesses will be there with their labor force ready to move forward. So, uh, of course, last week I made the trip back with Bill Huizinga and others uh, in the Michigan delegation uh, to make sure that we had an, another installment of funding for that, $250 billion, and then another $60 billion reserved for small banks, credit unions, community bankers. The president signed that on Friday. Yesterday was the first day that those dollars went out, and there were a lot of glitches. Uh, in fact, I heard last night from the Michigan uh, Bankers Association, uh, enormous problems still. Uh, I relayed those out of the White House uh, this morning. We'll, we'll see how this thing moves uh, over the next uh, couple of days. But at the end of the line, I mean, we've, we've got to emerge from this and we have to have, you know, op open up the, our states, get our businesses uh, with the demand by consumers, lots of different ideas to move out of this. Uh, in my conversations last week with Larry Kudlow, who's the president's chief economic advisor, of course, they're predicting downturn for this quarter, no question about that. We, uh, but he's, they're hoping that we'll actually have positive growth, though maybe small, uh, in the third or fourth quarter. I want to make sure that happens. And in fact, I'm working on a couple of ideas uh, this week 
to see what we can do to help bring people back to work so that you don't have to pay unemployment, you don't have to pay people to stay at home, but actually people can go back, be safe, got to have the testing capabilities, all those different things, very complex uh, situation for sure. But what is it that we can do to really spur demand again to bring people back to work? And once we do that, then we can obviously look at the long-term ramifications of the, of the, of the impact on, on the national debt and the spending that we've had to do to just stay afloat. One final thing, Fred, I want to touch base with you on. Uh, there are now 86 employees of the JBS meatpacking plant in Plainwell who have tested positive for COVID-19. One has died. The Allegan County Health Department told MLive that even with the 26 new cases in the past week, the number of infections appears to be on the downside of the peak. JBS has closed plants in Colorado, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin because of the number of workers falling ill with coronavirus. What's your take on the situation? How closely have you been monitoring it and uh, 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 how concerned are you that our food supply could be in some short-term peril because of this? Well, you're right. And this is not just an isolated story for us here in Allegan County. It's a national story. We saw the big Smithfield operation in South Dakota shut down uh, about a week ago. They do, I want to say 5% of our, of our pork uh, in terms of the slaughterhouse. Uh, North Carolina, other states, the JBS, uh, you know, their parent company, obviously JBS, Colorado, enormous problems as well. We've been in touch with the Allegan County Health Department. I know that they've been there uh, at the facility itself. They shut it down over the, the weekend, uh, this last weekend for uh, cleaning. Uh, it's my understanding, and I've talked to some of the JBS folks uh, over the last couple of weeks. They've installed, you know, the plexiglass shields, masks, the, Again, warn people about social distancing. All of that has to be encouraged and mandated, which is one of just mediate a second. Now, I supported what the governor did the other day by requiring employers, particularly in retail operation, that their employees have to have the masks. I've got mine over here on the counter. And we as customers need to have those on as well when we go to the grocery store, post office, or someplace else. So, but with JBS, I'm going to be reaching out to them probably a little bit later this morning to see exactly where they are. I saw the M Live story when I first woke up this morning. Obviously, a lot of concern, and they've got to take the steps to make sure that that workplace is safe and ultimately operational so that we can have that food chain uh, that leads to our, our Myers and grocery stores uh, where we all depend upon you know, whatever it is that we're consuming. He is Congressman Fred Upton, who joins us Tuesday mornings to talk about some of the things going on in Washington. As always, Fred, we appreciate you joining us again via Zoom, and it looks like it's going to be have to be this way for a, a little while longer. Uh, and maybe after all this is done, this seems to be a very effective way as long as the schedules work out well. Appreciate your time, sir, as always, and uh, look forward to chatting with you again next uh, Tuesday morning. I look forward to it. We may be in session, so we'll see, but it will make it work. All right, we'll make it work. That is Fred Upton on Real News Now, 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.